this week on Eagle Eye News at 6. SGA elections in full swing for a special runoff today. And a new Miss Auburn is crowned. These stories and more ahead on Auburn's News Leader. Good evening and welcome to Eagle Eye News at 6. I'm Ellie McCoy. And I'm Chloe Thaler. Tuesday night's election determined Miss Auburn 2018 and led to a runoff between two candidates for president. Catherine Kennedy won Miss Auburn over four other candidates. The ticket referendum was also decided in Tuesday's vote. The credit hour loyalty-based priority system was selected by students. This means that next year's postseason football tickets will be decided first by the number of penalty points and then by the number of Auburn credit hours. Nearly 50% of students voted for the option after being offered several different distribution options. This is the latest addition to a completely reformed ticket program that launched in the 2017 season. Students have spent all day voting today for presidential candidates Dane Block and Patrick Starr in the runoff election. Eagle Eyes News' Michaela Kirsch has more in the newsroom with what this runoff means. The runoff tonight is pretty much the norm for the SGA presidential election. Elections go to runoff when no candidate reaches 40% of the vote. No additional money can be spent on the extra days of campaigning. And while the runoff makes campaign week last even longer, it gives students an opportunity to focus on fewer candidates. Um, I think it's been about the same, I would say. Um, I haven't like been on the common course that much this week, but I've seen a lot of people out here um, campaigning for their candidates. So I would say it was like about the same, um, but definitely has been a little bit better from like being bombarded on all parts of campus. I did have to do my own research. It was, uh, it was hard because there were so many to kind of get a good feel for which each candidate stood for. Um, but what, when, when I did do research, the way that the Auburn website collects information and displays it and the way that they presented their, their points uh, was very well put together. And I think if you put the effort into going and looking what each uh, uh, candidate was stood for, that you got a good feel for, for what they presented. Both Patrick Starr and Dane Block's campaign have seen steady support on the concourse and across campus. According to our Eagle Eye Auburn.com poll, the race is tight, with Dane Block having 49% of the vote and Patrick Starr with 51%. Live in the newsroom, I'm Michaela Kirsch. And if you can't make it to Cater Lawn tonight, we'll be broadcasting it live on our Facebook page at Eagle Eye TV. Auburn City Council got heated Tuesday night as building heights in the city were once again discussed. The tension lies in the downtown area as residents and developers fight to establish a standard for building heights. Many residents want downtown buildings to stay at the 65-foot requirement that the City Council signed off on in the summer. Developers want a higher 75-foot limit to allow for more development in the downtown area. Many people believe that Sanford Hall should be the tallest building in the city. The iconic building comes in at 154 feet. However, the city can't control, what should I do? The building height for the Haley Center, for instance, is 321 feet tall. The Auburn Planning Commission will vote on the changing the building height standard tonight. Another hit from Auburn City Council included approving plans to expand the single stream recycling service that is already implemented in parts of the city. The single stream service will make recycling easier for residents by allowing residents to put all of their recyclables in one bin instead of having to sort through them. The service rolled out with 5,600 carts to neighborhoods with high participation in December. The grant is expected to finish out service to the rest of the city with 7,000 more carts. Last month alone, 101 tons were recycled in the single stream bins. The recycling carts are not mandatory, but the city is planning on having enough to meet the demand. Officers are investigating an alleged theft at the Auburn Arena Wednesday night. A member of the arena security staff reported that her purse was stolen while she was working at the game against Texas A&M. The case is still being investigated. This week on our new show, Plain Talk, Ken Ward interviews Governor Kay Ivey at her office in Montgomery. Do you in any way regret the decision to move that election or um, do you stand by that decision? I never regret following the law. And Alabama has a law that says if there's a vacancy for a U.S. Senate seat, 
and the vacancy is more than four months away from the next election, the governor shall forthwith call an election for U.S. Senate so that the people of Alabama will be represented. I simply followed the laws that are on the books in the state of Alabama. For the full interview, be sure to tune in to Channel 6 Monday at 6 p.m. and check our website under the Shows tab. Coming up, basketball looked to add another win to their column last night. You're watching Eagle Eye TV, Auburn's news leader. Even the best of us forget sometimes. But buckling up is one thing you always want to remember. Seatbelts save lives. Drive safe, Alabama. A message from your Alabama Department of Transportation. This is a place where it only takes a second to imagine your future. Grasp a new concept in class. Inspire a child's curiosity. Discover a real world solution. Seize an unexpected opportunity. There goes Davis. This is where you gain the preparation, confidence and determination to succeed. This is Auburn. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. It's like, hello, that's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. Fans direct your attention to the flagpole for a special presentation. You never really leave Auburn, because Auburn never leaves you. So, I just moved in with this family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, I'll poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. Basketball looked to claim their 13th home win of the season yesterday, but it came at a price. I'm Jade Nevitt with sports. Tiger basketball was back at home for a midweek matchup last night. Number eight, Auburn welcoming Texas A&M. The Tigers were looking for their 13th home win of the season. Bryce Brown heats up early for the Tigers. Brown drives down the court, stutter steps his way to the basketball before laying it in Michael Jordan style. Texas A&M would take over from there. Using their height, Admin Gilder dribbles across court and lofts one up for John Walk to slam it through. Again with the size for the Aggies, Gilder misses the layup, but Tony Trocha Morales snags the rebound and gets the easy two. Auburn down by 10 when Mustafa Heron makes the play, steals the ball and show, shows some NBA dunk challenge moves for the fancy two points. Tigers would go into the half down by 10. Auburn hits their groove again in the second. Jared Harper lays one up for Heron, who reverses it to make it a two-point game. 
This one would go down to the wire. Aggies get a possession with less than a minute to go, but Malik Dunbar gets the steal to force a jump ball. Possession arrow Auburn. Auburn's still down by two, but Horace Spencer gets fouled and goes to the line with his game on his shoulders. Spencer hits the first foul shot and would make his second one to tie the game at 80. With 10 seconds left, the Aggies tear down the court with Dwayne Wilson driving to the basket. Chuma Okiki in position for the Tigers to take the charge, but not the refs called restricted area foul and Wilson goes to the line. Wilson would miss his second, giving the Tigers one last sec chance with four seconds left. Spencer gets the inbounds, flings it to Heron, who takes the three-point shot for the lead as the buzzer sounds and hits the rim and falls short. Tigers lose their first home game, 81-80. Even on the last second shot, we didn't execute it properly. You know, I had all that time, went through it a million times, we still didn't execute it properly. So, again, they're, they're, those, are the, those are the reasons why we lost the game. We lost the game because they scored 81 points, they shot a great percentage, they got the ball inside, and they beat us. That, the, the, the calls at the end didn't lose us the game. The Tigers now fall to 21-3 and three on the season. The Tigers added another loss yesterday. Guard Bryce Brown left the game with a right shoulder injury and did not play in the second half. Bruce Pearl said the injury is a shoulder strain. As of this morning, Brown had not been evaluated by doctors and his status for the Tigers' road game Saturday is unknown. Earlier this week, Auburn cracked the top 10 in this week's AP poll. The Tigers came in at number 8, the highest ranking for the team since 2000 when they were ranked as high as 7. To stay up to date on all your Auburn sports, go to our website, eagleeyeauburn.com, or follow us on Twitter at eetv underscore sports. After the break, Auburn's nomination for best sports tradition. Fans direct your attention to the flagpole for a special presentation. You never really leave Auburn, because Auburn never leaves you. So, I just moved in with this family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, I'll poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. Auburn Campus Kitchen aims to make sure food on campus doesn't go to waste. Auburn's Campus Kitchens helps fight hunger and food insecurity around Auburn's community with providing meals for those in need. Rewarding um, to like have that leadership role and like know at the end of the day this is really great we're making these meals and giving them to people. Taking place in the kitchen of Tumor Hall on the Hill, leftover food from around campus comes together to create meals for organizations in need in our community, including Meals on Wheels and Salvation Army. The Campus Kitchens Project is a national organization that helps people receive food. 
On Auburn's campus, Campus Kitchens keeps growing. So many people are being fed that um, wouldn't otherwise or would have more trouble finding that. And like, we've grown so much from the beginning. When I was a freshman, we only packaged, um, I would say, maybe even less than 100 meals. And now each packaging shift is like almost 300 meals. And we're adding more and more organizations and places around um, the Auburn community. For Eagle Eye TV, I'm Natalie Salvatore. Last night, Mike Letzenkirchen, father of late Auburn football tight end Philip Letzenkirchen, joined forces with the Cary Center for the first Inspire AU Speaker Series. Mike used his son as an example of how to give back to those around you, stating that Philip had an intuitive heart for service to others. Michael also encouraged students to get involved with the philanthropy. Javin, executive director of the Curie Center, says that she hopes this partnership with the Lutz and Kirkins can encourage others to get involved. Auburn's iconic rolling of Timmer's Corner has been nominated for USA Today for Best Sports Tradition. This contest includes both collegiate and professional teams that have their own unique traditions on, the, on and off the field. Auburn, Mississippi State, and Texas A&M are the only SEC teams nominated. Auburn is in third place for the best sports tradition. The Oklahoma Sooners are in second place and the Oakland Raiders are in first place. The winning tradition will be selected by the public votes and will be announced on Friday, March 9th. After a near fatal fire injury in early January, four-year-old German Shepherd Adler is recovering well. Adler was in his home in Alexander City when the house went up in flames. First responders found him near death from smoke inhalation and carbon monoxide poisoning. He was taken to Dadeville Animal Clinic where he had several seizures as Auburn University College of Veterinary Medicine alums Dr. Lisa Placence, Dr. Tommy Poole, and Dr. Michelle Caragas began working on him. Adler was eventually stabilized and moved to Auburn's Veterinary Teaching Hospital for more rehabilitation and is now at home. Adler's owners Brad and Shannon Mullins say that their pet still shows signs of confusion but overall is doing much better. This week's Pet of the Week is Soli. Sully was initially adopted from Lee County Humane Society as a baby, but is now back as an adult. He loves belly rubs, good chin scratching, and snuggles. He does have a chronic digestive disorder that means he'll need to be on medicine and prescription food forever. Sully is looking for a special human to adopt him. He is available for adoption at the Lee County Humane Society. After the break, see how one Girl Scout sold $1,500 worth of cookies in just a few hours. You're watching Eagle Eye TV, Auburn's news leader. Patriotism. It inspires passionate debate and it's worn like a badge of honor with good reason. Because it means love and devotion for one's country. But what really makes up this country of ours? It's the people. To love America is to love all Americans. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love. Love beyond age, sexuality, disability, race, religion, and other labels because love has no labels. It's a beautiful day out here. Sunny today with light breezes, giving way to clouds in the afternoon. We could see some light precipitation to moderate precipitation later on, followed by powerful storm-like conditions. 90 miles per hour winds are expected. Authorities are asking everyone, stay indoors. Come on, that's it, let's go. Hoping for a crisp breeze to help keep you alert. Oh, oh, he took a sip of water too. That'll probably help. You were probably gonna turn down the radio too, so you could focus, right? Probably okay isn't okay. Right? If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, or a friend. I think the water line is what really drove it home. I blew on him.
Girl Scout cookie season is here and one scout found success selling boxes at a unique location. The Girl Scout, whose name has not been revealed, sold over 300 boxes of cookies in just six hours outside a San Diego marijuana shop. The shop advertised on their Instagram page, telling followers to buy some tagalongs with their marijuana. Recreation marijuana was legalized in California in January, but marijuana stores are not included in the list of acceptable venues for Girl Scouts to sell cookies outside of. However, the store's owner claimed she didn't set up shop outside the store. Instead, she wheeled a wagon around near the store, something that is acceptable under Girl Scouts rules. I mean, honestly, she's kind of a visionary. It was a good idea. I don't know how she came up with it. I know, right? That's all we have for you tonight. Be sure to keep up to date with all the latest news by following us on Facebook and Twitter at Eagle Eye TV and online at eagleeyeauburn.com. And check our Facebook tonight at 10 for a live look at the SGA callouts on Cater Lawn. I'm Chloe Thaler. And I'm Ellie McCoy. Thanks for joining us in War Eagle.